fault. What a fault. Yeah. Absolutely. So good thing they got that done before. City police are looking for a group of thieves who broke into a Clifton Heights home while residents were sleeping. Fox 2's Mallory Thomas shows us the terrifying moments the criminals ran out of the home. The residents of a home in South St. Louis's Clifton Heights neighborhood don't want to be identified, but they're sharing this video with us to warn others. The victims are understandably shaken up. Overnight Tuesday, four people shimmied open a window to their home, climbed inside, and helped themselves to gifts sitting under their Christmas tree. All while... <laughs> well, they didn't take those uh, decorations, I see. Nah, they didn't they... look at them. It, it, nah, they wanted the gifts. <laughs> those are those are nice ones too. They definitely say that's a bold thing to do. Like all it takes is somebody to come from the back room shooting and you're fucking dead. Right. That's such, I was never into burglar. I could never do that, man. Never. I was. I was. I was just. I just. Whenever they would be like, I would be scared. I just would see me, me one too. thing. <laughs> This, this, this is me, man. I ain't even gonna lie, man. If I'm scared to do something, man, I ain't. I don't, I, fuck it. I'm, I'm scared, man. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to do that shit. <laughs> Real some shit. Thing, some things you can get me to do that I don't want to do. But if I really, really feel it in my gut, I'm like, nah, fuck that. Um, peer pressure. Fuck your peer pressure. I ain't doing that shit. Um, yeah. Yeah, especially if it feels immoral. Especially if it feels immoral. It's yeah. like, nah, I'm good, You can just man. feel it in your stomach. Like, yeah. I, ain't, I, ain't, I wasn't built for that shit. Yeah. I wasn't built for this shit, man. Um, the victims are understandably shaken up. Overnight Tuesday, four people shimmied open a window to their home, climbed inside, and helped themselves to gifts sitting under their Christmas tree, all while the victims were sleeping around 4 o'clock Tuesday morning. In the video, you can also see the red SUV getaway car waiting to pick up the thieves. Just two minutes after breaking and entering the home, you see the group of four racing out the front door. The last to leave is holding the victim's purse, and inside the purse, keys to the victim's car and front door of their home. He climbs in the front wow. seat and takes off. This is the victim's car. She says city detectives are investigating the burglary. Wow. The victim says the police tell her the criminals who broke into her home are dangerous. She is just hoping that someone recognizes her car and calls police. In St. Louis, Mallory Thomas, Fox 2 News. Wow. Now, a call like that where, where um, St. Louis police are somebody calls and says, oh, there's some bunch of sons um, breaking in my house, and y'all get that call, and y'all head over there. Are uh, you thinking like, oh shit, I got it. I'm, that might be the last time thing I ever do in life. What are y'all thinking, man? Oh, there's, I mean, it's adrenaline, you know. There's, uh, there have been times where situations were over, and I'm like, what even happened? Because that adrenaline is just pumping so freaking hard. Um, mm. Yeah, that would be. Um, yeah, I'd be a little nervous to get to that, but you know, you got to put you got to put that aside, and the adrenaline takes over. And I guess it's just um, fight or flight. I was in an incident with a stabbing. I got into a situation with two guys with a knife, and they had to show me the video so that I could, you know, collect my thoughts and put all that on paper. Mm, wow, R R Russian will be the next Derek Chauvin. Yeah, I, yeah. I feel like growing up in like the hood, it kind of conditioned me to have that acceptable, like hearing gunshots and just all the this traumatic stuff that's going on. It really didn't bother me once I entered it in into, into law enforcement because being in a situation, gunfire going off, that felt normal to me, you know? And mm -hmm. I guess probably now that I'm a little bit older, you know, family and everything, it, that only plays back in my mind. Hey, I got to get back home. That's it. But I'm not really like scared or shook about anything. Y'all so fucking heroes, man. I couldn't do it, especially the temperature of what's going on right now. Right. When people being like hating cops and being dicks right. and shit. Trying man. to arrest them. Trying to trying to fucking lack of cops for doing their fucking job. Yeah, man. These dudes are heroes. I couldn't do it, man. I couldn't. Fuck that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, man. Salute. Make sure you take the five dollar challenge, the ten dollar challenge, the twenty dollar challenge, the fifty dollar challenge, the one hundred dollar challenge, whatever, man. 
Um, we got two cops on the panel, man. You getting it raw, man. No fucking interpretation. No what we think. Real live cops giving you the daily. Um, hit the like button too, everybody who's just joining in. Smash the like button. Smash it, man. A second shooter is now charged, but is still on the loose following the shocking early morning Clayton homicide from last month. Yeah, it happened near the intersection of Hanley and Wydown Boulevard. Fox 2's Max Deeknight joins us there live with what the major K squad and residents are saying. Max? Yeah, Jordan and Mandy, another manhunt is underway tonight. Residents here in Clayton say they are relieved that police have at least identified this second shooter. Now, we have a picture of this suspect. Take a good look at it because, again, police say this man is still on the loose. The major case squad announced Tuesday they've charged. <laughs> this racially ambiguous man. Now, that's another thing that I wanted to ask um, you guys. Every, now, we, we deal with that, too, here. Like, every time it's a son, man. Do y'all deal with that on your job? Like, oh, my God, every time it's a fucking son, man. Yeah, it depends on the nature the nature of the call. Like, you have a good idea, especially where you're going. Um, yeah, you definitely – you have a really good idea. Shit. Um, you got to really. You breaking up? Well, let's um. While you get your stuff together, go ahead. Um, um, Alonzo, is that Alonzo? Yeah, Alonzo. yeah. I, I would say uh, uh ninety nine percent. I'm shocked if it's not. Like I, I'm like, I, I had a, a white female that shot a guy, and like I, I was shocked when I got there. I'm like, oh no. It's, it's, right. it's not the usual, but, but you know I mostly work in a black area, so it's like when something pops off and the suspect, you know, it, it, it's a different race and it's kind of a shocking factor at that point. Mm. But even if it was a gladder area, it would still be mainly the summer doing shit, violent shit like that, though. At least over yeah. here, anyway. Yeah, I, absolutely. I, I, I mean, the, the, the crime, too. the crime stats, because I mean, forty-four percent of all violent crime in America are black suspects. Mm. But I mean, that, that glider probably was listening to like NBA Young Boy. Keep it real. Yeah, salute, um, salute to um, Amalin, man. Um, on the loose. The major case squad announced Tuesday they've charged 18 year old Darion Johnson with second degree murder for killing 41 year old Clayton resident Joshua Woo! Harris back on November 13th. The shooting marked Clayton's first homicide in nearly two decades, a tragedy that's had many neighbors. <laughs> this is Clayton. I went, you know, when I was in St. St. Louis in, what, 2013 or something like that, I went to Clayton. We actually stayed in Clayton. Um, Clayton is a, um, is, is, is a suburb, a fluent suburb, man. The first homicide in two decades. And a fucking... God damn, this guy does it. <laughs> um, God, holy shit. Yeah, man, I went to a wedding and um, it was a glider wedding in Clayton. Um, yeah, 10 years ago now. That's crazy. Um, yeah, man, it's a very, very nice place. So it's all glider? got the link. Was the majority of gliders the over there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, well, yeah, majority, yeah, but they have sons. And it's like neighbor in the city. It's not like a suburb like out of like Ferguson or something like it touches the city. It's like, like, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. it's in the same County as the city. Okay. So, um, it's, it's right there, but it's glider and, um, very nice. Very, very, they, they hadn't had a murder in two decades, but like that. So you already know what that means. Um, this kid right here, I wonder what he was doing over there, man. Um, hopefully they'll tell us, um, Squad are you, Tuesday. Are you back, John Griggs? John Griggs, are you back? Oh no, he must still be Darion John. Sec back on November 13th. The shooting marked Clayton's first homicide in nearly two decades, a tragedy that's had many neighbors shaken up. A lot of people they running in the mornings, and when we heard about that, we felt you got tigers out there, God. 
Oh, it's really scary. Li Hua Yu and Li Zhang live right off Whiteout Boulevard. They moved here from China several years ago. They say they love this area, and they're relieved to hear police have identified a second suspect. When we hear this news, I feel like, oh, my God, that's yeah. a great news to us because this is relative safe. Wow, look at this son, man, just walking through there with that gun out. Just so comfortable, man. Shit. And I feel safer. Eleanor Suddeth walks her dog Suki down Wide Down twice a day. She commends police and says she still feels safe here. The day that it happened, I was a little bit spooked to be walking around in the dark um, just because it was so sudden and surprising. Um, but honestly, no, there's always a bunch of people walking around, um, lots of street lights and everything. So, no, I don't I don't really feel any less safe. You says she hopes these new charges and another potential arrest close the book on this dark chapter off Y Down. This is a great neighborhood and we want all the people work together, make our, our home here at Clayton be a better and safe place for all of us. Johnson faces a half a million dollar cash only bond. Now, the other suspect in this case, the other shooter, Trinell Johnson, he faces the same second degree murder charge. He does not have a bond set, so he is still in jail tonight. By the way, both last name Johnson, police with the major case squad say they cannot confirm whether they are related. They're both 18 years old, though, so we will continue to follow that. And by the way, both of these young men could face life in prison for this homicide case here in Clayton. Live in Clayton. When gliders stereotype us, I don't get mad. I just get mad like at the sun man for doing stupid shit. That's why they stereotype mm -hmm. us. Do you get mad at other groups for stereotyping? No, nah, I don't get mad at nobody. To be no, honest that's good. No, that's that's a good thing. That's what I'm I don't saying. get mad at nobody. To be honest, <laughs> with you. but it's always they always they always put the gliders out there. They they make it a glider thing all the time with us. So, but when anybody stereotype, I don't get mad at nobody. I just get mad right. at the sun man because <laughs> like. Shit, Espe man, especially when it's a, like a complete shithead looking motherfucker with his pants sagging, reeking like butter.